Hi, everyone. Thank you for uh, logging in. Um, if you haven't done so already, please take a look at our uh, poll in progress asking about your um, type of stakeholder that you represent. We'll be starting in about one minute. Okay, it is now 10 o'clock, so we'll get started. Uh, thank you to, to those who have uh, told us what type of stakeholder group they represent. I'm gonna close that in about 10 seconds. So if you haven't had a chance to um, respond to that, we would appreciate uh, knowing who's in the audience today so we can make sure to um, hit the relevant points for anybody um, who's attending. Okay, thank you for your responses. Looks like 72% of our audience has uh, previously participated in With Caregiver Careers. Thank you all for your uh, participation. And we've got 8% who have not participated but are considering, 15% uh, who are looking to develop a CNA training program, and a few other stakeholders. So thank you all for attending. We appreciate you being here. Okay, so welcome to the With Caregiver Careers Training Program Recruitment Webinar. My name is Kate Badiato, and I'm the With Caregiver Careers Project Manager for our 2021 relaunch. I'm also the Director of Workforce Development for the Wisconsin Healthcare Association and a Career Development Facilitator. I've been working in the field of workforce development since 2012, and I'm so excited for the opportunity to support the vitally important skill building each of you do to improve healthcare outcomes across the state. With me today is WIS Caregiver Careers Project Collaborator, Robin Wolzenberg, who is the Director of Housing and Clinical Services at Leading Age Wisconsin. Hi, Robin. Hi, everyone. Uh, we also have Margaret Rosenthal, who is a Senior Project Coordinator at the Wisconsin Department of Health Services. She is with us today to explain one of our best program enhancements for our 2021 relaunch, which is our new partnership with, food, with the Food Share Education and Training Program. Hi, Margaret. Thank you for being here. Hi. Good morning, everyone. And last but not least, we have Kevin Coughlin, who is an Executive Policy Initiative Advisor at the Wisconsin Department of Health Services. Uh, those of you who have participated in our first pilot may remember Kevin for his excellent work getting with caregiver careers off the ground. He has been equally wonderful in helping to transition this program from DHS to WHCA and is with us today to help answer any questions you may have. Uh, in fact, Kevin will be staffing our Q&A box throughout today's webinar. So if you have any questions as we go along, please feel free to type them into the Q&A box on your screen. So good morning, Kevin. Great. Thank you, Kate. Yeah, thanks, Kate, and uh, welcome, everyone. We're really happy to have you here today. Thanks. Um, moving right along. So here's a, a general overview of what we're going to be covering today. Our goal for today is to help build and expand upon your understanding of what WIS Caregiver Careers is all about and to um, help you understand the roles and expectations for training providers. We'll walk you through a program overview, then we'll provide details on a new program feature, our FSET uh, partnership uh, from our uh, Margaret Rosenthal, and then uh, we'll cover highlights of the contract so you know what is expected of with caregiver training providers, and then we'll end with Q&A and your comments on uh, lessons learned if you are a previous uh, program participant. So for those of you who may not be familiar with the program, WIS Caregiver Careers is a workforce development program designed to address the CNA shortage in Wisconsin's nursing homes by providing free training, free CNA certification testing, and a $500 six-month retention bonus. 
The program seeks to encourage new workers to enter the field of caregiving by lowering the cost to becoming a CNA and by making training more readily accessible. The program pays for the free training and the testing, while employers pay for the retention bonuses. The 2021 relaunch of WIS Caregiver Careers is being administered by the Wisconsin Healthcare Association, WHCA, in partnership with DHS and Leading Age Wisconsin. The program originally launched in March of 2018 as a grant-funded policy initiative out of the Department of Health Services. When changes to the program's funding stream made DHS ineligible for further grants, DHS reached out to WHCA and Leading Age Wisconsin to become the new grant applicants and program administrators. WHCA and Leading Age Wisconsin are both nonprofits which represent long-term care providers across the state. DHS is still a Cornerstone project partner and has been integral in getting our relaunch organized. A big thank you to Kevin Coughlin and all of his colleagues at DHS from the Division of Quality Assurance and the Food Share Policy Section for all that you have done and continue to do to make this project a success. Uh, WHCA is taking the lead on, the, on program administration and administers the program's finances through two separate grants. We were awarded a $400,000 Wisconsin Fast Forward grant from the Wisconsin Department of Workforce Development this summer and currently have an application pending with the Civil Money Penalties Grant Program, which is administered by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. Uh, a big thank you to uh, the Board on Aging and Long-Term Care and the Wisconsin Technical College System for supporting our grant application. And also thank you to the Wisconsin Department of Workforce Development for our grant. Um, so as you can see from this list, uh, there are a lot of different stakeholders involved in the WIS Caregiver Careers Program, from the WIS caregivers themselves, to the FSET agencies, to our training providers, the CNA uh, testing uh, provider, nursing home employers, and also the UW Center, uh, UW Oshkosh Center for Community Development and Training. Uh, the, the real challenge of this program is to make sure that everybody is working together in a uh, seamless fashion. So here's a visual overview of how the WIS Caregiver Career Program works. Uh, one thing to note is that the student data tracking, which is provided by UW Oshkosh, it occurs throughout this process. Um, so as you can see, everything uh, starts with FSET, the Food Share Education and Training Program. We'll hear more here in more detail later on about FSET, but FSET will be doing our program recruitment, screening, and intake. They will also be there to support with caregivers throughout the training to employment pipeline by providing case management services. So once with caregivers are signed up, they move on to the, uh, their, their training program. FSET will refer them to uh, the training providers who have signed up to be a part of our WIS Caregiver Career uh, Consortium. Um, that, that would be all of you who uh, move forward with our contract. Um, if you, by doing so, you will be getting uh, pre-screened students referred to you from your local FSET agency. The next step in the process uh, might be familiar to most of you, uh, which is getting your students uh, to the certification exam. As part of your participation in our training consortium, we ask that you, can, you would do what you can to help students successfully take the test. FSET, FSET will still be in the picture to help facilitate this, but your help and encouragement to the students means a lot and is so very helpful. Uh, the WIS caregiver will also receive automatic emails from our student data tracking system, prompting, the, prompting them to sign up for the test. So once they uh, pass their test, the WIS caregiver would then move on to employment uh, at one of our participating nursing homes. And after six months, they would receive their six month uh, uh, retention bonus. Uh, Another aspect of our uh, 2021 relaunch is new and improved videos and marketing designed to increase public awareness of the value of becoming a CNA and also to assist our FSET providers and nursing homes with their responsibilities in the program. So the, the videos that we are uh, targeting towards uh, with caregivers will cover such topics as the value of becoming a nurse aide, um, highlighting that the uh, being a CNA is a stepping stone to a progressive career in health healthcare. Another video about how the program works, like the free training, free testing, and the $500 retention bonus. And then finally, a video which details 
how the program works in each step of the process so that the WIS caregiver can fully understand what the expectations are. Uh, the videos for the FSET providers and our nursing home employers will show their roles and their responsibilities, again, to assist them in their, um, their duties uh, to the program. So just a quick, quick touch on the FSET program. Margaret's going to go into much more detail, but just so, so that you can follow along with the rest of how FSET fits into the rest of the program. Um, the uh, FSET, in general, is a program that provides uh, that is a free free program that helps food share members build their job skills and find jobs. Um, their responsibilities as uh, part of the program will be to enroll with caregivers, uh, to provide program information, to conduct preliminary screening such as uh, like interest uh, assessments and uh, basic education screening, and then also to provide that case management support to help uh, the WIS caregivers overcome any uh, barriers to training and employment that might pop up. So here's the real meat of what we're here today is uh, information about what the WIS caregiver consortium is all about. Um, so as I mentioned before, WHCA is the entity which is um, organizing and administering this training consortium. So as part of your participation in the, in the program, um, we ask that you uh, sign a contract which outlines what your roles and responsibilities are and the type of remuneration that you receive for your participation. Um, we'll go into more detail about what the contract entails later on in the, um, in the webinar, but just to get you started, members generally agree to our communication standards are uh, a general spirit of cooperation and the $655 reimbursement level. Again, we'll get into some more detail about how the reimbursement works, uh, but just so that you know, like that's the general expectation of, of what training uh, providers will contribute as part of the consortium. Um, we'd have, uh, we expect that the Wisconsin Technical College System will continue to be uh, a large cornerstone of our consortium, as well as private training programs. We had good participation from both of those stakeholder groups in our first pilot. And this new relaunch, we are looking for even more participation from in-house training providers um, that are either already up and running or are looking to enter um, that, that field of training providing. An additional aspect that of the program, which is new to our 2021 relaunch, is uh, to help implement a key piece of COVID-19 specific legislation, uh, which uh, pertain to CNA training. On April 15th of 2020, Governor Tony Evers signed legislation to address the COVID-19 pandemic in Wisconsin. One provision of the legislation reduced the minimum number of training hours for CNAs from 120 hours to 75 hours, which is the standard provided under federal law. To help support the implementation of this new regulation, WHCA and Leading Age Wisconsin want to connect with any training programs or other stakeholders who are considering using the rules to create or modify CNA training programs. You'll see on this slide that uh, we have some ideas uh, that we're currently considering, but we wanna hear from you as to what would be most helpful. Um, at this point, I would like to collect some information from you on the audience interest in this sort of program development and to take your temperature on the ideas that we've assembled so far. Again, these, these, this ideas list is only a jumping off point and we truly value your ideas, uh, any ideas that you might want to share with us after the webinar. So, first. First, we have um, a question about uh, how long is your current training program? Are you currently um, uh, meeting the, um, the, the, old, the older minimum of 120 or more hours? Or are you um, looking to change? What, what, are, what are your plans for um, utilizing this new standard or standard minimum?
we'll keep this open for about 20 more seconds. If uh, any of you who have not voted could please um, help us out with understanding your interest in developing your CNA training programs that would definitely help us uh, best serve you um, with our program offerings. Okay, so with that, I'm gonna close the polling. Thank you for your responses. Okay, looks like we have about 43% of our audience um, is currently utilizing the, uh, the minimum, the new minimum, perhaps under the emergency or temporary nurse aid training program. We've been hearing a lot of good news out of those. Um, we have 18% who are at the previous minimum, at or above the previous minimum. 11% um, that are looking to do a mix of both. Um, and 27% of you who are in development. Thank you. Kate, Kate just, uh, this is Kevin. Um, we had one question and I wasn't able to get that answered uh, before we closed the poll. Uh, but this individual was, was indicating that all of us are under the emergency 75 hour COVID rule now. Um, what are you asking here? Are you asking uh, sort of what the future plans are? Um, and I think in that case, uh, yes, that's probably the answer. So if, um, Joan, if you wanna uh, put in your, into the Q and A uh, what your answer is, and then we can add that to the, to the total. Yeah. Thank, thank you very much. Yeah, I, I just opened that poll back up. So if you wanna provide um, that, um, that response, just go right ahead. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, we'll keep that open for another 10 seconds and then we'll move on to our next poll, which is um, your interest in the different ideas that we've collected so far. Okay. Thank you so much for your, um, your responses. So here are your different options of the ideas that we have so far. Um, we're definitely interested to hear what you think about our ideas. And then again, after our webinar is concluded, we'd love to hear your, um, your feedback on other ideas that you might have. We'll keep this open for another 10 seconds or so. Thank you so much for your answers and your feedback. This definitely helps us develop programs and offerings that will be of assistance to, to you, our stakeholders. So thank you. Thank you for your uh, uh, feedback. So it looks like we have um, a good mix of, of, of interest with Train the Trainer Support being our lead, um, our lead uh, interest. So after our webinar, um, there will be a survey that um, appears in your browser. Um, you'll, it's also set up to email you an after uh, webinar survey tomorrow. So um, feel free to share your ideas using that survey um, or call or email us uh, to, to get started. Okay. 
So the last piece of the WISC Caregiver Careers puzzle is um, our employer consortium. Uh, this is also administered by the Wisconsin Healthcare Association. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and we'll be organizing and administering um, the, the consortium ourselves. As part of their um, participation, members will agree to our data tracking um, system, entering information that we need, and then also to provide the retention bonuses, which is a $500 bonus after six months of employment. Um, and that is, um, to be clear, that's either full-time or part-time employment. And one, one thing to note is that only nursing homes are eligible to participate in the employer consortium, even though CNAs work in a variety of healthcare settings. Um, with Caregiver Careers, is currently targeted at nursing home employers due to our funding stream from the Civil Money Penalties Grant. Since that is a, a program which is funded by nursing homes, it needs to be, um, the, the money needs to be dispersed to support nursing homes. So that's why the nursing homes are the only employers that we support at this point in time. So a little overview of how, when all of this is going to take place. So between now and the second quarter of 2021, we will be doing our program organization efforts. We're going to be doing our outreach to our training providers like you and our employers. Um, we'll be uh, sending out and collecting our contracts and working with our um, data system providers uh, to uh, do some upgrades to have our system work a little bit more uh, seamlessly for, uh, especially for training providers. We wanted to, uh, one of our big lessons learned from our first pilot is to try to alleviate the uh, data entry burden that um, the training providers have to um, have to provide. Um, so we're we're doing everything we can to try to minimize those training or those those data collection uh, requirements. Uh, so starting in March or April of 2021, we plan to start uh, our uh, training uh, portion of our project. That will be big. Uh, uh, contribution from our training providers um, starting in, then we expect uh, the training to span the second and third quarters of 2021, starting in the, the fourth quarter of 2021 and through the first quarter of 2022, we plan to track our employment outcomes. And then finally, we plan to wrap everything up by June of 2022, which is the end of our, um, our grant period. So we'll have all of our grant administration and reporting complete uh, in accordance with our uh, grant contract, which states June 30th, 2022 as our program end date. So here are our minimum program outcomes that must be attained to comply with our grant requirements. Uh, we would actually love to see all 500 people who start the training complete it and move to certification and take employment in Wisconsin nursing homes. But these are the minimums that we are going to hit to make sure that we are in compliance with the grant that we have received. Uh, we also have a commitment to program evaluation so that we can know what's working and, and what could be made even better um, for future iterations of this program. Uh, so we have partnered with the LaFollette School of Public Affairs at the University of Wisconsin-Madison to have a student team analyze um, the data coming out of the program starting in fall of 2021. Um, we'll also have our training programs and employers complete a program evaluation survey, again, designed to provide us feedback on what worked and what could we do better. Um, and this will help us uh, not only improve the program, but also provide evidence of the, the results of this program and its value to society compared to the cost. So with that, I'm going to uh, transition this over to Margaret, who's going to give us some more details about the state of Wisconsin's food share employment and training program. Thank you, Margaret. All right. Thanks, Kate. Hi. Good morning, everyone. And I just want to thank you for taking time out of your busy morning to join us today. As Kate mentioned, I'm here to talk about the benefits of the FSEP program, um, what it is, what some of the services we can provide, and um, ultimately, what a wonderful partnership this is going to be. 
So on the next slide, there's a brief definition of, that summarizes what FSET provides. Um, as Kate mentioned, FSET is a free employment and training program. It focuses on the strengths, needs, and preferences of our job seekers to provide individualized services. Um, the ultimate goal of FSET is to help individuals obtain meaningful employment and um, earn a livable wage. The next slide, um, there's a, a map of, which shows how FSET is organized in Wisconsin. Um, FSET is operated by local agencies in 11 regions and eight tribes. Some of you might um, be familiar with the names of our vendors. The local agencies are listed on the left side of the slide. And I believe we might be taking a poll at this time to determine how familiar you are with FSET. Does your training program have a current working relationship with your local FSET agency? And there's three options there for you to select from. Okay, I think we'll close the poll in about 10 seconds. Great. Okay, so it looks like um, some of you are familiar with FSET. That's wonderful. Um, and I think we will move forward from there. Um, next slide, please. So who can enroll in the FSET program? Anyone over the age of 16 who is receiving food share benefits is eligible to enroll in FSET. That also includes um, high school students that are interested in employment. Um, then the next slide, please. Here's a list of some of the FSET services that are provided. I'm just gonna highlight a few of them. Some of the key um, services that we provide that'll be beneficial to this project. One of the first services is when someone enrolls in the FSET program, they go through a, an assessment with their case manager. Um, an individual strengths and their needs and preferences are assessed um, to use to create an employment plan for helping that person reach their goal. Some of the assessments might be um, basic education, um, what, what level they're at educationally wise, and um, occupational testing, aptitude testing, and interest. We all, FSET also provides assistance with job search. We help people um, create resumes, develop or enhance interview skills, and also work on some soft skills um, for employment, um, such as you know, how to deal with stress on the job, how to get along with coworkers, um, how to work with your supervisor to be an effective um, employee. FSET also provides educational services ranging from um, you know, certification programs such as HSCD, CNA, um, CDL, up to uh, a two-year um, degree program. Uh, we also provide work experience and help technical assistance with self-employment for those who want to own their own business. I think another real key aspect of um, this partnership is that FSET provides job retention services. Job retention means that if a person is employed after obtaining services through FSET, they're able to receive 90 days of follow-up services from their FSET case manager. Um, this can also involve providing some supportive services, and we can scroll to the next slide, please. Um, the supportive services are basically help with expenses that are reasonable and necessary to help that participant continue on with the FSET program. So if they're employed, that can mean, you know, helping them out with some expenses until they get that first paycheck. Um, they might need help with gas money, clothing, or accessing, you know, childcare, uh, shoes, um, while they're in training, if they need scrubs or books or um, transportation funds to 
go to and from training, FSET is able to provide that. Okay, and the next slide, I'm just gonna kind of summarize or point out some of the, the highlights about why you wanna work with FSET, why this is a fabulous match with this program. One of the things is that, you know, FSET is providing you with easy access to a pool of individuals who are interested in CNA training. And the pre-screening um, is another highlight of FSET. We're able to pre-screen to see if people have the aptitude to be successful in a training program. Individuals would not be placed in a CNA training program if their case manager didn't believe that there's a high potential of success there. And the case manager, as I mentioned earlier, after they provide the assessment, they develop this employment plan to promote success. And they review this plan with the individual um, every few months. Part of that means you know, talking with the individual, reassessing um, their interest to make sure they're still interested in a program. If they're in training, how is that training going? They're gonna be able to provide follow-up. Um, are there any new barriers that are popping up? Now that they're in training, um, do they need help um, with childcare or uh, have issues come up with their living situation that the FSET agency may be able to help out with? So the case management, the employment plan, and all of the um, assistance that they can provide along the way is really um, a help and a support for um, helping that person along the successful path to this training. And then again, the 90-day follow-up. Once they're employed, providing 90 days uh, follow-up to make sure that they're um, succeeding in their job. Let me go to the next slide. So perhaps if someone walks through your door, you're going to want to know, how can I um, make that referral to FSET? How can I make sure they get connected with the program so that they can participate? As I mentioned earlier, an individual has to be receiving food share benefits. So if they're not receiving food share benefits, they need to apply. Um, and at the end of this presentation, there's uh, some links about how to apply for food share benefits through access and um, where the local agencies to provide um, the uh, FSET applications and the interview um, are listed there as well. So if you apply for food share, part of the food share interview is um, asking the individual if they wanna be referred to FSET. So at that time, after they complete the application interview, the um, food share worker would refer them to the FSEP program. And then the FSEP program would take it from there. And then on the next slide, it's just a diagram showing that if you're already, if someone walks through the door and they are already receiving food share, but they're not connected with FSEP, they're gonna wanna contact um, either that food share worker or they can contact the FSEP agency in their local area and ask to be referred to FSEP. And that's something that can happen very quickly. Um, and again, there's a link at the end of the presentation um, with a list of the, uh, the local partners, the local agencies that provide FSET services. Okay, and next slide. There we go. <laughs> There's the, the, uh, the website. Um, the first one is uh, a link to um, the FSET agencies and the FSET area contacts and gives a little bit more information about the program. And then the link on the bottom is the um, is one way of applying for food share benefits. You can contact the local agency, local FSET, uh, food share agency, pardon me, or you know, individuals can go online and apply through Access. It's a portal where people can apply for um, a variety of benefits in Wisconsin, um, food share MA. And, um, through this portal, they can apply anytime, 24 uh, seven. So um, that could be helpful for individuals that come through your doors. All right, and I believe that wraps up my portion, um, kind of uh, a quick summary, but I, I think it really um, points out some of the highlights and how FSET is going to help this um, initiative be very successful. So. I think Kevin might be able to take some questions and um, either I'll answer them at this time or take them back. But I just want to thank you for your time. Appreciate it. It's an exciting opportunity. Thank you so much, Margaret. That was super helpful information. And um, 
having experience working with um, uh, employment programs, I have personally experienced how case management can make such a huge difference for employment and training outcomes. And so mm -hmm. we are just so grateful to have FSET's participation in with caregivers, and we really think it will help make mm -hmm. our training provider partners and our employment partners even more successful, as well as our WISC caregivers. So again, thank okay. you so much for your um, participation. And um, mm -hmm. Kevin, do we have any questions that, that you want to bring up for, um, for, uh, for Margaret? Uh, I'm seeing something in the the chat. Um, one person is asking just to confirm students must be receiving food share in order to participate in this program, correct? Yes, that is correct. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. As Margaret as Margaret detailed, if you have a student applicant come to you saying that they would like to participate in your training program but may need assistance with um, funding it, you can use those resources that Margaret um, provided or even um, direct them to one of our program staff here if we can make sure that they get to the right um, place to um, to ensure that they can also participate so so yes um, and then don't see any other F set specific ones um, but um, uh, we will always have more time okay go ahead a, Kevin um, I was just um, um, I lost connection for just a minute. So, uh, did you answer the when is the application materials going to become available? Um, that was another part of that uh, question about food share. And the the application materials uh, to to participate in food share um, uh, that was on this slide right here about um, the agency contacts and applying for food share. Um, again, if they are participating, if they're already a food share member, they can contact their food share worker uh, at DHS for a referral to FSET. Is that correct, Margaret? Um, yes, or they can contact the FSET agency using one of those links, the um, FSET agency contact list. They can go right to the FSET program, and the FSET worker can go ahead and make that referral for them to connect them. So either going through their food share worker or just contacting the local FSET agency. And in terms of a, um, applying to be um, a WIS caregiver training provider, um, at the conclusion of this webinar, you'll indicate your interest in, the, in participating, and then we'll follow up uh, to, to start the contract process. So there, there isn't an application per se. As long as you're an approved DHS training program, um, then then there isn't any further screening out of, of uh, training program. It's just signing the contract, which gets you into the program. Um, there's a couple more questions. Uh, so is the FSET an additional way to receive free reimbursed training through WISC caregiver program, or is it the only way? Um, so the FSET, um, uh, the grant that we receive from Department of Workforce Development is funding the free training and testing. And uh, as part of that grant application, it was uh, really designed for, uh, to, to get uh, recruitment for uh, people who are underemployed or very underemployed. And an FSET, uh, FSET was really one of those options that we could kind of include in our application, uh, which we did. So yes, that is the only, um, sort of avenue uh, to get to this uh, this training pot of money. So I hope that answers that. Um, and then there's another question about is this program available for Wisconsin residents only or can Minnesota residents participate too? And Margaret, I believe you have to be a Wisconsin resident for food share, correct? Yes, um, unless you're just temporarily absent from the state. Um, but yeah, for the most part, yes, you have to be a Wisconsin resident. Okay, and then uh, uh, there's another question about reimbursement for training programs, but I think Kate will be handling that um, in a little bit as part of the presentation. I think that's all for the upset. Thanks. Okay, thank you, okay. Kevin. And thank okay. you, Margaret. Yeah, thanks again, everyone. Thank you for your time. Okay.
So I'll just be hitting some highlights of the contract. Again, this is the idea behind here is we'd like to give you um, a feeling for what our relationship, our working relationship will be uh, between WHCA and you as a member of our training provider consortium. So each member of the consortium will uh, enter into a contract which describes the expectations for the trading provider and the remuneration that's provided in return. Um, so the first highlight is um, our communication standards. Um, the point, the, the, the idea behind this is that um, we're asking you to keep your contact information up to date and to respond within five business days. Um, the idea there is that um, we want to build upon lessons learned from the first pilot. Um, gaps in communications in that first pilot tended to cause outside issues. And um, in the contract, we set up that expectation for the keeping the contact info up to date and the response within five business days so that we can avoid any um, miscommunication issues that can arise. Um, the next point on cooperation, the expectation here is that the training provider will inform FSET to the enrollment processes and the materials and that um, they'll, there'll, there'll just be a spirit of cooperation between the training program, FSET, the WIS caregivers, and WHCA. Um, something to note is that um, depending on the individual, it might be the WIS caregiver who really takes the lead in that, that cooperation, or it might be the FSET provider. So we wanted to make it clear that um, we're all partners in this together, and we, we all want to work together cooperatively, just for, again, for the best outcomes possible. Um, like I mentioned, we are working to eliminate uh, data entry for WIS caregiver trainers. Um, we are making progress to help um, eliminate those surveys that, that uh, WIS caregiver trainers um, had to do in the first pilot. At this point in time, it looks like we, the, the, the minimum data entry that we'll be asking our training providers to do is simply enter the WIS caregiver's identification number, the program identification number, into TMU when you're creating that student record. Um, that uh, identification number will be provided to um, each of the training programs every time a student um, signs up with FSET. You'll be getting that information emailed to you automatically from the tracking system, and then it will just be up to the training program to get procedures in place to ensure that that WIS caregiver ID number is um, translated over to the instructor or, or other program staff who creates that TNU record. Um, it's a real linchpin of our data tracking system. It's the bridge that connects all various different systems. And so that key piece of information, while it's very small data entry burden on the training providers, it's still a very, very important aspect of it. Um, we're also asking that you will um, commit to providing a, a program evaluation survey at the conclusion of this program. Again, um, that's to help facilitate our data analysis that we're going to do post um, training program. And then finally, that you would be responsible for running a criminal background check on our participants. A little bit about invoicing. Um, the reimbursement level is $655 for each student trained at or above 24 hours. So if the student drops out of the program prior to completing 24 hours of training, that student is ineligible for reimbursement. The $655 reimbursement includes the cost of the criminal background check. There is no additional reimbursement and there's no additional reimbursement process for the, the background check. So it's all folded into that one reimbursement amount. And um, that $655 remains the same level of reimbursement regardless of the number of hours in your program. So if you're training at a 122-hour program versus a 76-hour program, um, both programs will be receiving the same uh, amount of reimbursement. We, um, in the contract, we ask that you would um, invoice us invoice WHCA for your students on the invoice template provided by us, uh, which will include all of the details required by our grant. 
um, and that each invoice uh, must include each student's WISC, uh, WISC caregiver ID number. We'll have more details about how reimbursement is going to work and um, some screenshots of what the, the, the template will look like and things like that at our implementation webinar. So stay tuned for more details on that. Okay, so here's our next steps. This is what you have to do. Um, so our next step for anybody who wants to move forward in the um, consortium, the training provider consortium, would be the first step would be to sign our contract. The first step to getting to sign the contract is to indicate your interest in, uh, in participating in our after webinar survey. So after our webinar ends, a Zoom survey will show in your browser. You will then have the option of saying, yes, you want to participate, maybe you want some more information before proceeding, or no, you do not want to participate at this time. We will use your answers in that survey to follow up with you. If you don't see the survey in your browser or you don't have time to complete it today, we will also have the survey set up to be emailed to you tomorrow. If you do not get the survey or are watching this as a recording, um, please follow up with us um, by calling or emailing me. There on the final slide, you'll have our contact information and that is the best way to get started with our contract process. Um, then once we organize all of our um, information to include into the, the contracts, we will be sending those out um, after October 12th. So you can expect those that week. After that, after you sign the process, uh, sign the contract, we'll, uh, we'll work to connect you with your local FSET agency um, between now and the end of the year. Um, we want to get those relationships started and um, get those um, connections made um, before we start uh, enrolling our WIS caregivers, uh, just so that that working relationship is established. Um, you can look forward to our implementation webinar and uh, towards the end of the year or beginning of next year, uh, which will provide further details on how you go about um, participating in the program, all the details. And then finally, you can expect to start enrolling caregivers with caregivers in March or April of 2021. So again, if you would like to participate as a training provider, make sure to indicate your interest in doing so either in the survey at the end of this webinar or by calling or emailing me. And that's the information to get, get a hold of me. Um, you can also contact Robin, if, especially if you have a working relationship with her from her work at Leading Age Wisconsin. We are co-applicants, uh, co-partners in this and um, are excited to work together um, to, uh, to help uh, close the uh, staffing gap in CNAs and Wisconsin nursing homes. So with that, um, um, let's uh, Kate, we revisit do have Kevin. Some, yep, uh, yeah. we do have uh, yeah, several questions. Yeah, we'll do Q&A. Okay, several questions here. Uh, one uh, question is, uh, this individual uh, you know, thought that funding um, through FSET was already available to food share people. Um, so kind of wondering about that. And Margaret, um, I know those, uh, that funding is limited and this is really able to help the FSET agencies uh, leverage some of their um, limited funding, correct? Exactly. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the funding for FSET is limited, like Kevin said. And so when funding runs out for training, unfortunately, then um, individuals are not able to pursue um, their training as quickly as they would want. So this does leverage additional funds and um, frees up more funds to provide um, services to more people. Um, and then uh, another question is, um, uh, does the 655 uh, include the testing costs? And uh, the testing costs is, is really done separately. So 655 is just for uh, sort of the training and then the all-inclusive, uh, you know, anything else that the that individual would need to get through their training. So their criminal background check. Um, and, and Margaret, maybe you can talk about this because we, we had a couple of people asking questions about you know, would FSET be able to help pay for textbooks, um, uniforms, um, things like that? So if you can uh, talk about that. Uh, but b before I get to that, mm -hmm. uh, so the testing agency, we will be, we are paying headmasters separately uh, the cost of testing. So you do not have to, uh, 
you do not have to come up with that money as part of the 655 that's strictly for your training class. So go ahead, Margaret, with uh, related okay. to the, what else? Yes, um, asset, a, a, a great aspect um, of the asset of the asset program is that uh, asset is able to pay for um, expenses that are related to completing some type of training activity. So if an individual would need books, um, funding for you know, gas to get back and forth, or if um, services are provided online, if we're still, you know, working through COVID. Um, some of the agencies um, have loaner laptop programs. So FSET is the, you know, enables individuals to access um, those types of support services that they need to be successful, including books and um, transportation, childcare, and so on. And Margaret, I think that your your response right there also highlights the value of having that good working relationship with FSET from the training providers to FSET. The more that they're in communication with each other and have that cooperative working relationship, the easier it will be for the training providers to get their, you know, for the WISC caregivers and the training providers to get the resources they need from FSET. If there are any, you know, like you were saying, these like scrubs or other requirements that the mm -hmm. that would help the students succeed um you know having that open line of communication between the the partners would just really help facilitate that right right and, uh, yeah it's really a boost to help you know people go through the program successfully and obtain employment and maintain employment and then there was another question about um that under that phase one uh, there were uh, a number of individuals that were not able to participate due to the criminal background record. Um, and it seems uh, the pre-screening should include this to help with the success rate. And uh, if, even though the, the FSET agency will not be doing a uh, caregiver background, they do know uh, their history, correct, Margaret? And so we, we feel um, pretty strongly that uh, we don't think there's going to be a lot of people that are going to get to to your training doors that would be then later disqualified for the WISC caregiver uh, because of the background. Uh, is that correct, Margaret? Exactly. As part of that initial assessment, um, when an individual expressed interest in a job, that is going to be part of the conversation. Um, is the person going to be eligible um, or are there going to be some types of barriers due to their, their background? So they will be assessing that. Yeah, and part of our, like the, the WIS caregiver and WHCA's relationship with FSET is we will make sure that we highlight those, um, those um, items in somebody's background that might um, prohibit them from proceeding with the career and to just make sure that that, again, that line of communication is open and reinforced with our FSET providers so that they're briefing their interested individuals about those restrictions. Then we have another question, uh, FSET related. How will FSET set apart their own participants for those going through WISC caregiver careers? And uh, Margaret, I think it's it's possible that that they may also have someone coming from uh, a different money source that could be going to a training program. Correct? Um, that that wouldn't be a WISC potentially a WISC caregiver. But it's going to be unique to this program, and what was unique to the last one is each individual will have a unique 10-digit um, WISC caregiver number. Uh, it's going to be different than last uh, last time. Last time it was a 10-digit numeric. Uh, this time it is going to start with an F, and then nine numerals. So that um, uh, that will separate those when you when that individual comes to. Uh, your training program, that is really the only requirement that we are asking the training programs this time around. They do not have to do the additional tracking, but this, it will be still very important that they get the WISC caregiver number into the TMU um, system. So that will uh, dif differentiate those two uh, individuals. Mm -hmm. And then uh, they're asking for a link to the um, PowerPoint. Um, yes, yeah, so this is being recorded, and after the presentation, I will take the, um, 
the registration link like when you guys got into the webinar and I will email it to the entire list of attendees. Um, if for any reason you don't receive it or you would like another copy sent to one of your colleagues, feel free to reach out to me. I'm more than happy to distribute it. Uh, then there's a question. So is the training only available from April through September of 2021? And then the rest of the grant is tracking employment only? So um, we have 500 training slots available through our um, grants funding. So the, the training slots will be uh, made available on a first come first serve basis. Um, we'll be making sure to uh, it, reiterate that point to our FSET providers so that they know that, you know, it's first come first serve and they, they have a, a impetus to, to um, enroll students as, as quickly as possible. Again, because we have that limited grant period, uh, we do want to um, put an emphasis on FSET to, if they're gonna enroll somebody, they're gonna use funds uh, to um, enroll, provide free training to first use up the training slots from with caregiver careers um, so that we can make sure to hit all of those um, grant requirements before the end of the grant period, which again is June of 2022. So we'll, we'll have those open uh, until they run out. And then once they're, they're gone, they're gone. So is it possible, uh, Kate, that if, if we don't have all of them finished by the third quarter of 2021, that we may extend it into the fourth quarter? Exactly, exactly. We will continue to make them available um, until they run out. So um, you know, I anticipate that there will be a, a, a demand and it will get used up relatively quickly. Um, in the first iteration of With Caregiver Careers, we had, what, 3,000 training slots, Kevin? And that went pretty quick. Yeah. So um, right. now that we only have 500, we expect that this will move, we'll move through them relatively quickly. So yeah, first come, first serve. Yeah. Um, so just there's a few minutes left, but we have a, still a lot of questions. So there's a lot of asking about TV testing. Um, so just to reiterate, the grant money is only paying the training program, the 655. So that will cover everything uh, that needs to be done. There's no extra funding. Uh, and then I think with you working with the FSET agencies to see if some of these extra things could be paid uh, additionally through their program, that would be great. Margaret, I'm not sure if you have, if, they, if TB testing would be a potential. Um, if it's required and if it's not, uh, if the testing isn't able to be funded through the program, through WISC CARES, um, then yes, FSET could pay for that. Okay. And then there's a question coming up uh, uh, even about the COVID vaccine, you know, who would have to pay for that if that was required? And again, kind of same answer, um, this grant will not unless, it, you know, it's the 655 is inclusive of everything needed. Um, so. I'm not sure if F said uh, it's, it's probably too early to say what whether they would be able to do that or not. Um, and then, uh, will there only be 500 slots open? Yes, that's what we have the funding for at this time. And again, we're hoping that uh, we'll now have two pilots that have uh, that will have um, been uh, success, hopefully successfully implemented in Wisconsin. Uh, there's the Wisconsin or the Governor's Task Force on Caregiving has. It's also uh, put some recommendations in to the governor about uh, something to do with WISC caregiver and leveraging this. So, uh, you know, who knows what, what can happen in, into the future. But yes, for this grant, it is the 500. Um, I think uh, any way we can meet with FSET to discuss partnerships prior to signing and committing uh, to a contract. And I think, yes, that would be very appropriate. We are meeting with, uh, we have sort of had a preliminary meeting with them, but we're having a more detailed meeting in uh, sometime in October. I think it was probably mid-October. But yes, uh, feel, they should know a little bit about it. If not, uh, you know, drop Margaret's name. And uh, yeah, I think the sooner the, the better to get that relationship going. 
Yes, and I think we'll be establishing a liaison for each region. Um, so that would be, you know, a contact person that you'd be able to speak to to have um, your questions answered. But as Kevin mentioned, we're, we're going to have a meeting with all of our uh, local agencies so that we can discuss this and to um, assign the, the liaison to make the communication more smooth. Yeah, so um, I think we got almost everybody. If we didn't, you know, please uh, send to Kate or Robin and we'll get those answers to you. And we had like 100, 100 people on, so this was really, really great. Uh, anything closing? You got one minute, Kate. No, I just want to thank you all so much for your time today and your interest in our program. We look forward to working with you all again to, to build these um, critical skills to help our, uh, our uh, loose caregiving uh, landscape across the state. So. Thank you all so much. And thank you, panelists, um, thank for, you, for your you help today. Job. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you. Yeah, mm. thanks. It was, I it was, uh, really mm. appreciate everybody's help and, mm. and participation. So with that, we'll sign off. Thank you. All right. Bye, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank okay, have a great day. Thanks. Bye-bye.